everyone. Welcome to our study this week, Lesson 3, April 11 to 17, entitled Jesus in the Apostles' View of the Bible. Let's bow our heads, our Father in Heaven, tonight. As we begin our journey with you, we pray for your Spirit's guidance and protection, His empowerment, His understanding to be given to us in such a way that we can present to your people exactly the view of Jesus and His disciples about the Scripture. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we will talk about lessons that would give us an overview of the week's study. The words of the Bible are projected on the screen. The key text is Matthew 4 verse 4 from New King James Version. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Just a little background on the text. This text was stated by Jesus Christ right after his fasting and prayer. The angel enemy, Satan himself, has tempted Jesus Christ. And the answer of Jesus Christ to all the temptations there was, it is written. Therefore, Jesus has quoted the scripture at the time, none other than the Old Testament. There was no New Testament yet at the time. Their Bible was the Old Testament. And so Jesus referred to the Old Testament and all his teachings Teachings, all his conduct of life was taken, mandated, or in accordance with the Old Testament at that time. And so, tonight, let me present to you the concepts provided in the lesson study guide. You see, our study guide introduces two very important concepts, contradictory or opposed to the views and philosophies of Jesus Christ. The purpose of this is only to compare and contrast. Okay, so there it is. The first philosophy that is presented in our introductory study is postmodernism. I will not dwell so much on this because that's not the topic. The purpose is only to show how this philosophy relates with the Bible. Postmodernism is so complex a philosophy, but I'd like to drive that postmodernism teaches there is no absolute truth. The truth is, according to postmodernism, there is no truth. That's the truth for them. Therefore, they reject the Bible as the authoritative source of doctrine and guidance. Okay? There is no truth. The truth for them is their selves. The intrinsic. The decision comes from within, not from the outside. Why does that happen? It's because there are so many practices in this world which are against the Bible. One good example of that is homosexuality. You see, homosexuality is condemned by the Bible. Postmodernism believes that homosexuality is biological rather than psychological. So, since these views are opposing, they rejected the Bible, okay? And they claim that what is truth is determined not by the external, not by the Bible, but myself. So, whatever comes to me, if I feel good doing about this, then I go, okay? So, if I am a female and I want to marry female, Go ahead. That's the teaching. You see how destructive these philosophies in as far as the Bible is concerned. Another philosophy there that is against, contrary to the teachings of the Bible, is Darwinism. We know him. We know his philosophy. His teachings are all in the textbooks, in the private, as well as public schools. The concept is evolution. It does not believe the teaching of creation. That is the teaching of the Bible. It states that everything that we see around was not created but they just evolved naturally. Opposed to the teaching of the Bible which is creation. And you will see there contrasted with the philosophy of Jesus Christ and the disciples in which according to the text we read when Satan tempted Jesus he also quoted from the scriptures and Jesus actually defended himself using the scriptures you see. And Jesus said it is written Therefore, Jesus has considered, has regarded the Bible as supreme. It is the authoritative book 
that will guide conduct decisions in all ethical situations. So that is why our Bible study this week is entitled Jesus in the Apostles' View of the Bible. And I'd like to welcome all of you to the study this week. We will go into specific details of the philosophy of Jesus in as far as the Bible is concerned. You see, these philosophies and those who subscribe to it or believe in them actually are the greatest challenge we face today. When I say greatest challenge is not to destroy them but on how to present the message of salvation for them. So let's not quarrel them. Let's be friends with them. Let's do good to them. Let's not debate with them but let's just be kind to them. Who knows they will respond to the workings of the Holy Spirit. Our lesson this week simply says no to postmodernism. You have the X there and it's telling us no to evolutionism but yes to the word of God. Yes to what has been written in the scriptures by the prophet. Okay, so allow me now to reflect further on the concepts of Jesus' philosophy of using the Bible for his life contrary to postmodernism, rejecting the Bible, contrary to Darwinism, rejecting the Bible. We will be studying here, it is written, uh, Jesus in the law, Jesus in all scripture, Jesus and the origin and history of the Bible, the apostles and the Bible, and I added there Friday, April 17, as a child in temptation, okay, from the desire of ages. This is the text for our reflections. We are admonished, counseled by Apostle Paul from Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, King James Version. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy. There are good philosophies here on earth, but there are this destructive philosophies which are contrary against the teaching of the Bible. We are commanded, we are advised to be aware, see to it that we are not deceived by these philosophies and vain deceit after the tradition of men and after the rudiments of this world and not after Christ. You see, we're not saying we should not study them. We should be informed of their teachings. But you see, dangerous that if we subscribe to them, we will lose sight of the teachings of Christ. And so this is a very timely admonition from Paul to be aware, to be conscious, and to be on guard so that our thoughts may not be polluted, may not be taken captive by this philosophy. Rather, we will subscribe to the Bible as demonstrated by Christ and as demonstrated by the apostles. They use their scripture, the Old Testament, for their teachings and for their lifestyle. And for further reflections, I'd like you to be honest with yourself because I'm aware that these philosophies have circulated in the textbooks, in the classrooms, and even in the libraries. So here you have four options for processing. You see, when we say processing, we need to assess ourselves and see to it that we are in the right direction. Of course, you can do it by yourself and your Sabbath school teacher can also process that if you are in the Sabbath school. Number one option is I do not at all trust the Bible. When there is a member there who would choose that or maybe a visitor who is non-Christian, maybe you can set aside time in a room where you can, you see, discuss and see his perspective there. And of course, your goal is to make friends, not to use the Bible to hammer the person. Option number two, I somewhat trust the Bible. Okay, At least he has that idea, inclination to believe. And this person may now be given Bible study, something like that, to convince him or her about the Bible. But of course, Adventists will not choose one and two. Okay, And the number three option, I mostly trust the Bible. You see, there are Adventists who don't trust the rest of the Bible. Our teaching is clear. We believe everything there is inspired by God. Some of them may no longer be applicable for us, but we believe the whole Bible is inspired holy words of God. Uh, so if they choose that one, you have to clarify that so that you can actually guide the person to go to number four. Like Christ, I completely trust the Bible. No to this destructive philosophies. 
See, that is our goal. Just like Jesus Christ, He would quote the scriptures. Just like the apostles, they would quote the scriptures and that solves the matter. Okay? Personally, I also completely trust the Bible, including all the promises that I believe are relevant today. The issue of COVID-19, I still believe this has been predicted in the scriptures. In fact, Paul said, in the last days, there will be perilous times. We are living in a very perilous time, dangerous time. And Jesus predicted pestilence would come, pandemic would come. And we see and we observe that the Word of God is trustworthy, 100% reliable. So we can completely trust God's Word in our our Father in heaven, thank you that you will be with us throughout the week. You will give us wisdom in a way that we can digest, we can absorb spiritual truth that would strengthen us we face the last days. Thank you that you bless our people who are watching. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Lift up the trumpet and loud.